As a reviewer, one of the things I try to do very hard is isolate and keep my experiences with the game I need to review confined to just that. However, in the case of wrestling games, because it's such a narrow genre, I think it's impossible to not compare it with other games. In this review, I will add an extra section to talk about its comparison with other games to highlight the features and drawbacks of AEW's freshman outing. In a classic love letter to the Aki Engine wrestling games of the Nintendo 64 and subsequent Def Jam series on PlayStation, Yux has created an arcade style system that both new and old players will be able to pick up and play immediately. The game is fluid and fun, and it's a rare occasion for clipping bugs of any impact to appear during a match. You can remap all the controls to suit your control style. Blood is optional, but be warned, if you leave it on, it's a wonder the wrestlers have any left. In short form, it's gratuitous, and I love it. Moves are crisp. You'll start to figure out the timings for when people are in uninterruptible frames, when counters should happen, and the more you play. Matches can be very quick, like a minute 30 if done right versus CPU, but against humans should be longer. Grappling involves light or weak grapples, kicks or punches, with modifiers like resting in the corner, against the ropes, against the guardrail, etc. Once a grapple is achieved, it becomes a game of paper, rock, scissors for the grappled opponent to try and counter whether the next move will be a grapple, punch, or kick, and win. Players can team up online, although as of this review I was not able to test the online play, but the game promises to allow up to four people to play online co-op across all match types. 20-man battle royales are achieved by assigning five entrants to one person each. Match types include one-on-one -on -one with variations of normal, lights out, and false count anywhere, two-on-two, -on three-way matches, four-way matches, casino battle royale, which is a 20-person over-the-top rope match, and the last person standing is the winner, ladder matches, which are sadly 1v1, even though there are more participants in some of the Road to Elite modes. Exploding barbed wire death matches. After purchasing an item through the in-game store, you can have the finish be sparklers like the real world ending was, or something much more catastrophic. A great training mode like fighting games and mini games for you to master. You also have the ability to create your own wrestlers, and the system with which they've implemented this feature is definitely a freshman outing. There may be a day one patch that adds more items upon launch, but as it stands at time of review, the number of clothing items and customization features for creator wrestlers, also known as cause, is limited. I requested info from THQ but did not receive a response before the review live time. Also with no way to download wrestlers from online, people will either have to mod wrestlers in on PC or fans will have to use cough formulas like in days of old to follow someone else's guide to create the perfect representation of the wrestlers they want in fight forever and on that note cause are significantly underpowered at creation compared to the rest of the pre-made roster the only way to raise their stats is to take them through the story mode called road to elite a roughly two and a half to three hour combination of wrestler sim and match action every week you'll choose whether to build mental health through going out working out to increase in XP at the expense of energy or dine out to solely rebuild energy. Eventually dark and rampage become options as well. And with each choice taking a turn and only having four turns before having to do wrestle on dynamite and end the week, your choices do matter. The storyline blocks do change whether you win or lose key matches. And even after five playthroughs of the mode, I still have not seen all the block tracks. I've won the tag titles in one block as an example. By the end, you will have built up enough skill points slash XP to bring your character up to on par with the pre-made roster. A word of warning, everyone in the office initially thought you'd be able to take a character through Road to Elite multiple times to max them out and build them higher, but instead taking it a second time resets your character down to base stats. Also, preset characters cannot learn new skills or increase stats, so the only reason to play with any of the existing roster is to earn in-game money, which all Road to Elite unspent currency and XP is converted to game currency at the end of the mode. All in all, since you're going to have to play Road to Elite for every call you make, it ensures a lot of replayability for the game. 
Create a team is also included, albeit just for two people. So large factions like the Jericho Appreciation Society or the Elite will require multiple teams. Wrestlers can come out as, as a tag entrance together or separately, and you get to control the minutia such as songs, poses, types of pyrotechnics, camera angles, and more. Speaking of, entrances are no more than 10 seconds tops. There are no full entrances. But after playing the game for 30 hours, I was grateful and less inclined to skip them because of their interactive nature, uh, being able to set off effects, pyro, and camera filters at my leisure, combined with the brevity of the entrances. Create an arena is also an option, but with the meager number of options, I'm hard pressed to figure out how you'd complete the challenge of making 10 unique arenas that are anything you'd want to wrestle in. More on this in the comparison section. Speaking of challenges, there are challenges for Exhibition, Story, and Road to Elite, which also guarantee you'll be playing the game a lot of different ways, which again is smart on behalf of Ukes to maximize the time spent by players with the game. While on the subject of ways to play, like most newer fighting games, there are optional simplified controls called Casual Mode and an easy countering option where you can push the face buttons alongside the counter buttons, as well as controls for screen shake and vibration controls for a high level of customization and accessibility. The audio in Fight Forever is phenomenal, with the crowd whoa in anticipation when a big move is about to be done, cheering, chanting for wrestlers, and the fully work for moves is second to none. Every move not only feels good to do, but sounds horrific as it lands. Have a bunch of friends over, dump someone on their heads outside on the concrete, and everyone will grab their own heads and be exclaiming and shouting, guaranteed. There is an in-game shop, you cannot spend real world money in this game, where everything you do adds funds for you to spend, uh, the aforementioned challenges being one of the easiest and most lucrative ways to earn. You can unlock entrance poses and some apparel, uh, called apparel in the menu. Items to place in your created arenas, called arena. Taunts, which are moves. Entrance moves, which is called entrance. And alternate attires, difficulties, mini games, match options, and wrestlers under more items. There are some hidden secrets to work towards, and I'm not going to spoil them in my review, but know that there are things for you to unlock that are not in the store until you meet the requirements. While some may say it's unfair to compare this game as a first entry to a most likely promising series to other wrestling games and engines that have been established for years, there are many items that are glaring exclusions. For example, the ability to add text or upload images means making a great replica of your favorite character not included in the game is going to be difficult, if not impossible. Same goes for create a ring features. Now that's not to say there won't be a day one patch that may add more items, well, everywhere, but that's not confirmed. Simple things like being able to add two colors to a piece of gear is missing in 99% of the item options. And strangely, the attire of wrestlers that are already in the game is missing from the creator wrestler options. This is probably my biggest critique of the game, as the game includes Kota Ibushi's full name in the callouts, yet I can't make a simple pair of split blue and white shorts to make the man that the name belongs to. While this is incredibly frustrating, it still doesn't take away from the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay of the actual game. For the hardcore creators, however, who may not even play the game and only enjoy creating, this will be a drawback, if not a deal-breaker. Not being able to create your own pay-per-views and champion belts is a loss for eFeds as well. While I have seen the occasional bug surprise, inability to figure out how to grab opponents while they're on a table for big moves, and lack of call options, the action, sim, and moment-to-moment -moment gameplay loops are insanely fun. While it may be a little rough at the edges, this is a surprisingly solid and competent first entry that promises hundreds of hours of fun for you and your friends. 8.5 out of 10 head-crunching sounds on the arena concrete floor. 